In this video we will uh, cover how to create um, folding structures based on uh, three-dimensional objects. And uh, I will show you two uh, different kind of methods. Uh, one's uh, deforming the object and the other one is uh, tessellating the object to get uh, similar results like you can see right now. For the beginning we start with a really simple uh, box um, with 40 by 40 by 40 centimeters and this box should have no segments and you can obviously deform this box uh, with uh, many different kind of modifiers and um, I will just use one modifier this is uh, FFD box we can also do it actually with uh, edit poly or the simple thing like this I just uh, go under control points and I can just uh, twist this thing and uh, I will just twist it to 45, 45 degrees and you can see that this whole thing is twisting but you can also see that uh, 3D Studio automatically s uh, tries to smooth uh, my surfaces which we uh, actually don't want so what I can do is I can just add um, an edit poly modifier on top and change under modeling uh, properties uh, from uh, smooth to um, to a hard geomet geometry okay and if I go in my viewport settings from shaded to uh, realistic I can already see uh, a little bit better uh, depends on the light situation that this thing is folded and the next step is uh, in edit poly you um, can uh, for example cut cut it from uh, uh, cut the surface uh, I go into my uh, um, grid, uh, grid snapping settings uh, grid and snap settings uh, choose vertex point and then I can cut it from here to here so I really have uh, two different uh, polygons. Alternatively I can also um, just add um, a modifier uh, called Edit Mesh. The difference between Edit Mesh and Edit Poly is that Edit, edit Mesh uh, uh, c uh, consists on uh, triangulated uh, faces so I can just choose one of these faces or probably these two and uh, delete them and then you can see um, that's the beginning of a really nice uh, folded structure uh, a cube which I twisted and uh, opened on uh, one side and if I then on top add a shell modifier like we already did in other tutorials uh, then it already looks like a nice shape I uh, switched on straighten corners and uh, then you can see that it exactly has uh, an amount of 1.5 uh, centimeters thickness uh, of this object uh, if you have really simple shapes and you want to go to a folded structure like this you can definitely deform it with many other modifiers it's just uh, the more complicated the basic object is the more difficult it is to control and I will show you one other method which is actually quite nice to get really fast uh, uh, good looking uh, folded objects but here again it's difficult uh, to control this you get really nice results but if you really want to have full control about your geometry then it's probably better to work with uh, 2D splines and uh, combined with cross section like I showed in my video before uh, with folding based on 2D lines with this example we start again with building a really simple uh, box I go to uh, uh, length 40 the width now I choose uh, 160 and height 40 again so it's a cube like this and I already uh, adjusted the length segments and the width segments so it's uh, a really basic uh, tessellation like this and I will show you one method uh, to get um, uh, really nice uh, results in a fast amount of time using uh, tessellation and using uh, the topology uh, uh, generate topology tool of my graphic modeling tools in 3D Studio Max. 
Okay, we added um, added poly modifier, and uh, when I added the added poly modifier, I can uh, enter my uh, graphite modeling tools, and uh, I have one nice setting, and this is uh, generate topology. Uh, I go into this menu, and by the way, I copy my object uh, so we can play uh, a little bit uh, more afterwards. Uh, just produce a copy. I go into my um, object, and when I open this menu, uh, generate topology under my graphite modeling tools, you can see that I have different kind of preset topologies. And you can just play a little bit with this. You can also combine it. I can, for example, use this uh, uh, topology uh, course, and you can already see that it has an impact on my shape. You can also combine these. Uh, I go now into this uh, edge direction. And what you can see is, uh, again, that uh, the whole topology of my object changed. And I will again uh, change to uh, modeling um, hard, so the whole thing will not be smooth again. And uh, this is uh, actually a result. Uh, when I change it to shaded, you can see that it's somehow quite nicely folded uh, object in a really fast way. And if you are a little bit familiar with this, you already have an, uh, can already have an idea what comes out of this if you use these tools. Really important for this is the basic tessellation. So we just look at some other examples and change our uh, uh, basic uh, tessellation. For example, if I use this box, uh, I can go under uh, tessellation of my graphite modeling tools and, for example, go for tessellation like uh, this. And if I just use the same topology like before again, again, this uh, uh, cross tessellation and then uh, this uh, edge, direction, uh, edge direction tessellation, you see that a completely different structure comes out of this. I change it again to a hard and I can also do it like this that I uh, go to polygon. I can um, just select some polygons, for example, by random. I would say I just want to select 70% uh, of the polygons. And if I hold my shift key, then I can just add my topology only to this part of this uh, selection, which is actually quite nice. If I just choose these part of the polygons and then again hold my um, uh, shift key, then you can just see what it does. It just changes my selection. Okay, this was based on, um, um, on a really simple um, topology I changed with my uh, tessellation tool. There's also another modifier which we want to look at, uh, that's a, mo a modifier tessellate. Uh, I again have my basic uh, object and uh, in uh, width direction I just increase um, the segments and uh, in my uh, modifier menu I just choose my uh, tessellation. And here you can see that um, I have different kind of uh, settings. I can increase the iterations. You can see that uh, it uh, has a big impact on my uh, topology and uh, change uh, some settings here. And if I want to uh, pimp it up a little bit again with my uh, topology and would like to play with this, of course, I have to add an edit modifier, edit poly modifier, and then can um, again, choose some of these uh, patterns, and you can see that the whole thing is slightly distorted again because the tessellation goes now around the corners. And if I change to my uh, um, hard uh, smoothing um, settings, then you can see that it's uh, a more or less folded structure uh, based on my topology. It really depends on with, uh, which kind of geometry and topology you start. It's more like playing with uh, uh, geometry and you have uh, less control like, than player using uh, um, 2D shapes to, uh, to build up your folded structure. Uh, what I would like to show you uh, the next uh, minutes is how you can continue working with this, probably uh, 
make a building structure out of this. I will um, add a new edit poly and I do this uh, a little bit like Photoshop uh, with layers I just use for every step one edit poly and I just call this edit poly uh, windows and um, I just choose some of these uh, polygons and probably I just choose this by random. This is always nice if I don't have a specific um, idea what kind of surfaces I would like to choose then I just let the computer do it and um, I think this is uh, for example already looks quite um, uh, quite good. I can extrude this a little bit for example to the inside which I did right now. I can extrude it by polygons uh, which doesn't look so good because they're not connected. It's much better to do it by groups right now. And uh, these could be my windows in my design and I want to separate my windows uh, and just make a new object out of this. In my edit geometry I go to detach and uh, what you can see right now I have uh, my uh, box and I also have my new object which I just call windows right now. So these two uh, objects I have, my box is still my basic design and I call it design basic. And uh, if I just have my windows right now and my uh, basic design I can just continue like this. Uh, what I do next is I will add another edit poly and there's something different I do right now. I can animate uh, um, a lot of modifiers, for example, also like the modifier edit poly and I again select uh, polygons uh, by random. Now I go to 40% uh, like this and uh, just uh, let the computer suggest some of uh, my selections. And what I can do is in this terms I can um, probably again go to uh, extrude. I can extrude it in all directions. And the nice thing about this is that just because I used um, uh, the setting animate, I can still work on my geometry, for example, uh, add an FFD box and uh, move my uh, control points, which I do right now. Just uh, make this a little bit smaller and this a little bit bigger. Okay, uh, I just modified a little bit to, uh, to have a better idea of uh, um, of my um <coughs> of my design and what I can do with this. And uh, I can just go back into my edit poly extrude. And you can see that there's one uh, menu, it's called uh, settings, which you normally don't have. I can go into the settings and I can change it again in a parametric way. My extrude, and that's really nice, you can pile up a lot of, uh, um, a lot of modifiers and if you uh, work in Edit Poly with Animate then you can always come back to the settings and work on this. And really important, whatever you do, you always have to uh, close it with, um, with uh, this confirm buttons, otherwise the animate function is, uh, is gone. Okay, so the last thing we can do is we can just add some material. I have two materials, uh, for example, for this one I use this gray and then again I choose my uh, windows and I already prepared this uh, glass material and then we are already ready to render our little um, structure. Okay, just because we didn't, uh, we used the FFD modifier for the basic shape, we didn't use it for our windows, you can see that the windows don't fit anymore. What you can do is you can just copy, right mouse click, copy this FFD modifier from our basic design and uh, choose our windows and right mouse click on edit table poly you can paste it probably like an instance and then you can see that it just fits right now and if you make a quick visualization 
uh, which I did uh, beforehand, it already looks like an interesting starting point.